Hey, everyone. Yes, new new tools, right? These aren't necessarily tools that are going to wind up uh, over on the website that I don't name, but they are nonetheless, we'll call them new tools. And this gets, this is a video about tool production, the relationships you might have with a manufacturer, and sort of what happens when you don't have very tight relationships with a manufacturer. So let me grab this thing, uh, contains much gravity. I don't know if you're familiar with this. Um, so maybe some of you are. This is a core puller, right? You may have seen these in other uh, YouTube videos. It's a destructive attack. If you're not familiar, you take a very heavy duty screw, you drive it right into the front of a lock, you shred the keyway in the process a little bit. And then this big John kind of hooks over it, her, her chunk. And if you start cranking down back here, you'll actually back this off, back this off, back this off. You can see you'll be ripping the plug right out of the front of the door. Uh, it's especially well suited to Euro style locks, but there's no reason you couldn't do this to an American, you know, deadbolt or anything like that. So if you've seen these, you might say, oh, that's really cool. Mr. Avi Vent at Lockmaster in Germany makes a tool like this. Yeah, good, good quality German steel. Um, that's not what this is, though. This is from China. This is one of our vendors. So we work with a factory over there to produce, uh, well, it's the Lishi factory, right? We, we order our Lishis from China. That's where they come from. And we work with a number of manufacturers and vendors here in the United States as well. Most of our tools, uh, again, uh, somebody's going to put it in the comments. I never like to talk about blue group gadgets, as somebody calls it. But uh, most of the tools that I have designed over the years, most of the tools we make, sell, use in classrooms, most of them are made in the U.S. Not all of them. Uh, we try to list it wherever they're made, but uh, most of them are American made. When we talk to China, though, it is, as you're not surprised to learn, the wild freaking West. So, yeah, this is not a German item. This is, this is something that somebody in China bought, and they said, well, th this is a popular thing that's all over YouTube and other stuff. We could make that and make it they did. This is what happens when you just start kind of producing things that anyone's like, I could make one of those. Uh, if you're not a first responder, you might not be aware of the fire pick. Again, if you're someone like me, this is all over my Instagram ads, right? My kerchunk, slip it in, pop the door open. Uh, fire pick. Uh, this is not the fire pick made by fire pick, though, right? This came from one of our factories in China that we sometimes buy stuff from. Uh, again, it's the, the Lishi factory. Well, no, it's not Mr. Lee. It's, it's one of the Lishi's resellers. But they're like, hey, free samples coming in your next order of Lishi's. Because, again, we're, we move a ton of Lishi tools. And they said, you're a good customer. Maybe you want to stock this. Maybe you want to stock that. So they're just throwing stuff at us. Um, do I think this is happening because they bought one in the United States and then shipped it and then re-engineered it? I don't know. I think the fire pick is probably made in China. A lot of things are made in China. And that means somebody else is making your stuff in China. So this is why uh, there's, there's a whole wonderful video about why online shopping sucks now. I'll stick it over here if I can with a little blurb, and I'll, I'll link it at the end too. So Gabby Bell, if you don't know her, adorable, wonderful YouTuber. Uh, she has a whole video about white labeling and drop shipping and how a lot of merchants don't have a real relationship, a meaningful relationship with the people who are producing the goods that they sell. Many times an online merchant won't actually ever even touch the goods. Uh, they have no control over the quality. And I'm not calling Firepick out on this one. I think Firepick is, is a good product and they probably are pretty hands-on with their production. But a lot of vendors don't have any real control over what they're selling. And I wanted to take a minute. Again, I, I don't like to talk about our tools catalog, but I will say there are a few things we're very proud of. One, um, most of the stuff we sell is made in the USA. Two, a lot of the stuff we sell, I have designed. <laughs> like, there's, there's a lot of shit on the website. You've seen it on this channel, right? When I come up with a new idea and I knock things out and we're testing and trying and, and hell, like we even have, uh, you know, we can't legally call these Legos, can we? But um, if you come to Black Hat, the bricks and picks area, you're going to see some really fun things. I just had an idea and I have great people. I have machinists and designers and 3D printers, a whole team that works with me. And I say, hey, you know, I'd make a sketch and I make a model and I work and I say, could we make one of these, prototype that, cut that, mill that? And before you know it, there's a real thing in my hands. But I'll never put it on the site unless I have tried it, I, many iterations. I have a tight relationship with our production team, uh, which leads to point three. Uh, we are not drop shippers, I'm very proud to say. And I'm, again, this is not calling out any other vendor you may have heard of. Um, Southern Ordnance, uh, Southern Specialties, lock, Lockpicks.com, Barrett Brockage. These are people that maintain their own inventory. 
uh, to, to the best of my knowledge, they did for many years when we worked with them a lot more exclusively. And likewise, everything on <laughs> Blue Group Gizmos, everything on the site I don't name, um, is inventory that we own and maintain, right? It is shipping from the U.S. If it's for sale on our site, like if, if you see it and it says in stock, add to cart, that means we physically have the thing in our warehouse and our employees are the ones who are sending it out. Uh, anytime that we do a pre-sale, we're very clear about that. The, the, the tanks, the R134A tanks, we did that as a pre-sale and we're very explicit about it. But most of the time, everything we're selling, it literally it's on the website because it's in our warehouse. And if you place an order, it's going to get turned around fast. You're not waiting forever. But the real, the real wild scene is when people in China reach out and they're like, hey, look at this cool thing. Do you, do you want this thing? This again, this was a free, a free sample, like in one of our shipments. And they said, if you're interested in, you know, special tools, uh, why is this happening this way? Well, it's because if your production is in China, China gonna China, right? And they even say, you know, available now, uh, do, do your own logo right on here, whatever you want. Um, do I think we're gonna be selling this? Pro probably not. But do I think other people might start selling it? Just because again, like these are in the channel now, uh, stuff that's out there, if you don't control your own production in house, this is what happens to all goods. So I think it's just an interesting take on a lot of things about how shopping works today. Again, uh, Gabby's video, Gabby's video is tight shit. I don't know how angry certain companies can be, especially like, again, if your production's in China, this is understood to be a thing that happens in the world. Do I think Avivent should be angry that this tool is, is out there not being made and sold by him? I don't know how much grounds you really have to do that, assuming, again, that he's using Chinese production. Uh, I don't know what I really want to say with this video other than I'm proud of our production methods and processes. I'm proud of our quality, a great deal. I'm proud of everything I've created and shared with you all. Again, most of the shit I make, we're including, we're going to get these Lego bricks up there soon when they're finalized. Um, it's going to be on my GitHub. I love to Creative Commons give away all my stuff. You don't have to reverse engineer it you can just make it yourself. And if someone actually starts selling my designs, which has happened once in a while, I reach out and I say, hey, come on, this is online for free. It's clearly licensed Creative Commons. It's non-commercial. What, what are you doing? And people have been respectful. Do I think some of our tools are gonna to wind up over in China? Do I think, uh, I don't know, something like the, let's see, the, the little DDC. Do I have a DDC card in here? I must, yeah. Do I think, you know, the DDC card of ours is going to wind up produced in China? Uh, maybe. What do we do to combat that? I don't know. Maybe just be nice guys. Uh, like, I'm a pretty nice guy. I like to think you like me. You like what I try to do. Uh, you, you get it from us if you want to. Or again, you go on my GitHub and you make it yourself because I'm fine with that. What I'm not fine with is the gray area in the market where everything now is kind of like a crapshoot when you buy a lot of stuff that can be drop shipped or white labeled. And no, that's, that's why we really do take pride in the quality we make. We have a direct relationship with our vendors and manufacturers. And I have a personal stake in anything that I create because it's not just going into one person's hands, it's going into all of our students' hands and it's going into a bunch of professional teams' hands. I always love feedback from the field when someone's like, hey man, that thing you did, I really helped us out. I dig on that. And if you like it too, you know, look at, let me know, hey, I really like this, or this, that, or the other. Or why don't you make a change? You can email me, say, hey, I wish this had different cuts. Yes, I swear to God, I'm making the European and Australian version of this soon, 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 soon. Uh, Yale and Gainsborough and I guess Lockwood we're going to do for the Aussie version. And I have got some notes, probably going to be Abbas and Yale and some other things for the European version of the, the Devious Decoder cards. But when you see them come out, you know they're being made in America and you know they're being made with love because I love all of you. So that's all I had to say on this one. Kind of a quick hit of a video. Uh, watch Gabby for more information. And in the meantime, enjoy what you want, get the quality you need, and uh, stay safe out there.